special kind of nothingness in general, and how to translate the kanji, which is what I said. And then a point appears, and out of everything comes that point. That point is Ami no Minako Nushi no Okami. Ami no Minako Nushi no Okami. So in, as soon as it manifests, the manifesting of things is expressed in its origin by a god in Shinto, which is called the god of the center of heaven. That's the Ami no Minako Nushi no Okami. It's the god of the center of heaven. And then from him come two, two gods, Take, ta, Kami, no, ta, 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 Kami Misubi and, and Kami Misubi, right? And then from them come others and others and others. And through that, and eventually you have the two procreative gods, you have Izanami and Izanami, who are masculine and feminine, and they have sex and they create the universe. That's the the, the Shinto thing. And also say it's all related to, you know, to, to, to that stuff in detail, the different qualities of the different things, right? And so you have to be willing to, to understand. It's like language. It's like, it's like mathematical formula. If you don't know, you know how to read formula, you don't know how to, you don't know what E means or pi means or anything, you can't do it, right? You have to understand what he meant. Rather than try to understand what he meant, they went off to study the temple of the world, right? And it's really stupid. It's not that difficult, right? But there's a, there is, I mean, I mean, O Sensei, first of all, O Sensei may, so in terms of religion, O, o Sensei, um, well, there are different things, right? There, there are three things that he, he said but we, we have, that seem to be a little bit contradictory. One is, he says, he says very clearly, I feel does not come from religion, but uh, it, it, it actually, it shows, it will lead religions to complete themselves for them to do what they, they say they want to do, what their purpose is, right? That's one thing he said. Ideal leads religions to complete their purpose, right? Then he says something which, this is not an exact translation, but it's close enough. He says, Aikido is a, is a religionless religion that is without dogma or system or good and bad, but its purpose is what religion's purpose is. Right? He says this very clearly. Now he does refer to Aikido also as Kanagara no Michi. Kanagara, which is the flow of God, that's just from the primal origin of the, the, these movements of God in Shinto, so that everything essentially has, has a holy aspect, which is similar, similar to the, what is it, the, the sparks, the idea of the sparks and the shells and the Kabbalah, right? So it's very really the same, right? And he calls Aikido Kanagara no Michi, right? But he's, you know, and he also says that Aikido, you have to understand the Kojiki, which is the equivalent of the Bible for the Japanese, but it's not very long, and it's mostly stories, right? They're completely mythical stories, right? And he says, you have to understand the Kojiki, and the Aikido is the Kojiki. Like the Kojiki is manifesting from Aikido, but at the same time, he says very clearly, Aikido is not religion, right? And it doesn't come from religion. So what it means then is simply that he's using the language of a specific religion that he, he, he was very deeply involved in to develop the ideas that are in Aikido. Right? So this is very important to understand. So and of course those those now, for instance, in my own experience, for instance, I'm reading about how all sense I said is when I think he said when when he was praying. Uh, through prayer, right, this, this uh, light, uh, another Osense, he says, a second me appeared made of light. <laughs> and part of, part of his, the way he trained himself in Sore was with this <laughs> light figure. Right, the, the figure would, was carrying a sword, so Osense would, would, would practice Sore with this light part of himself that appeared. Right. Now, technically, that appearance of the double is part of one, is, is part of the six no yogas of Naropa. Within the six yogas of Naropa, you learn to create a double. Right. And so, it's, I mean, there's this, you know, and they talk. Well, Kasaneda talks about it, but um, you know, but uh, 
that, that is to say that there is a tradition now which exists of the double back in the six no, no, the, of Naropa you can create two or three doubles and they seem to be completely physical when they appear they can go and teach and have conversations with people while you're over here and I knew a, a western uh, Indian master who that happened sometimes he would just appear someplace when he was over there the appearance of a double is something which is not unknown in the East. But Osensei's double was made of light. And they practiced together. So, so I'm just saying that because <laughs> I'm going to say this. And Osensei would pray, or what Hikijusi Sensei would pray, doing the, the Nori dolls was like, all of a sudden, it's like, in, for me, there was like this explosion of light in my head. So there, you know, there's there's a connection here, and um, O Sensei says that in your practice you should be able to you should well it, it happens and it, it, this is a, a key to. This is a sign of what you might call real progress in Aikido, is that you generate heat and light. Yeah. Now, um, O Sensei uh, um, when O Sensei came into the room, for some of us, this was very clear. What we experienced when Osensei was came into the room was warmth. We could actually feel warmer in our bodies, and we could see light. And it wasn't just around Osensei; it's like the whole room. It's like somebody turned the light on in the room. Right? Now, this was not true. Not everybody experiences, but enough that I did. Osensei experienced. That other people experienced. So I just want to say that this thing of heat and light, again, was something concrete. It wasn't, you know, like when John Stevens talks about it, he says, well, what O Sensei really means is, you know, you know, you should practice intensely. And, uh, I mean, he just doesn't talk about it. So, actually, it's real heat and real light. Now, the, the, in, in the lectures of Sensei, he talks about heat and light being generated by Kotokama. But my experience was, at least when Sensei was alive, certainly in the period, the two years he was alive, and I don't remember, I don't remember when it got less, but it was very strong in the first two years. When I would finish practice at Hongbu, out of this thing was hot. It really would get hot during the practice. So it would be nice if we can, <laughs> we can do that ourselves. So I'm just saying this to say that these are aspects of life, you know, these are real things. They're concrete, right? When O Sensei says something, he really is saying something. You, you can find this with Picasso too. When Picasso talks about art, sometimes it seems very strange or abstract or poetic. It's not, it's completely concrete. and. Uh, in the way that he paints and the technique of painting. And so the things that our sensei say are always concrete in that sense. Well, sometimes he fudges a little because the people just don't understand. So, for instance, he talks about the Genkai, the Yukai, and the Shinkai, right? So the Genkai is the world of everyday life. The, the Yukai is the world of the invisible, which we would say is the world of the astral and the world of the, you know, <laughs> other dimensions, to put it simply. And then Shinkai is the world of pure light. But nobody could handle that, so he started saying, well, the Genkai is everyday life, and the Yukai is Buddhism, and the Shinkai is Shinto, right? You could see he just gave up on trying to talk about what it was really, but look at the earlier lectures, and he does say that. 